Hello and welcome to Wasted Potential, where we discuss the wasted potential of our favourite plotlines. Rivalries in fighting games rarely ever actually develop and change as the series continues. They tend to go one of two ways. They typically will either stagnate and lack any sort of development or progression, or they will simply stop because it's reached the point where the involved parties want to kill each other, and you'd have to remove one from the series if it actually went anywhere. Jan Lee and Lei Fang is probably the best example of the former. This rivalry goes all the way back to the original Dead or Alive from 1996. Jan Lee saved Lei Fang from a group of thugs, but rather than being grateful for his intervention, she instead felt incensed, insisting that she could have dealt with it herself. As such, once she learns he'll be competing in the first DOA, she opts to do the same, intent on defeating him and proving that she can defend herself. Her DOA 3 bio seems to suggest she fights him in the tournament and loses, hence her return for DOA 2, where she is again implied to lose to him. So, she returns for DOA 3, where she fights Jan Lee in her story mode, but he's too busy fighting Hitomi and Leon for her to show up in his. DOA Dimensions later inserted a scene where she pesters him until he throws her into a table to make her get lost, and then challenges and loses to Hayate instead. But DOA 3 would have been the ideal time for things to change. After all, it's the same game where Gen Fu, perpetually trying to win money to afford a life-saving operation for his granddaughter, finally achieves his goal by scrounging up enough money over the three games to do it. As a result, he retires from the tournament, his apprentice Elliot taking his place from DOA 4 onwards. And DOA 3 did give Lei Fang the perfect out. In her ending, she saves a child from a group of would-be kidnappers in a manner that is clearly meant to evoke her backstory with Jan Lee. And I'm fairly certain that the same thugs we see Jan Lee beating up in his ending is if to suggest a gap in skill between the two has finally been closed. Whether she beat him this time or not, this should have marked her making peace with what happened and starting a new chapter of her life. But no, DOA 4 has her return and she is still determined to beat him. We do somewhat get two developments here. First is that Jan Lee's rivalry with Ryu Haibusa is solidified, but Lei Fang's thoughts on this are unknown. Second, Lei Fang meets Hitomi, who will be her best friend going forward. But while these relationships could have added a new dynamic to the story, they remain wholly separate from the rivalry. Lei Fang cameos in Jan Lee's story before he fights Alpha 152, but he doesn't fight Lei Fang herself while he serves as her final boss, highlighting the significance of this encounter. And since Jan Lee obviously isn't the one to fight Alpha 152, this gave the impression, to me at least, for the next seven years, that Lei Fang did finally beat him. Even her ending, as pointless and stupid as an accidental groping on a train is, by lacking any sort of allusion to Jan Lee seems to suggest that she has found peace at last and moved on. In DOA 5, she's still trying to fight him. All that's changed by the fifth game is that she's also backpacking around the world with Hitomi. She follows Jan Lee around and spies on him, half of her fights happen because of this, and gets beaten by him in the quarterfinals. He goes on to win the tournament, but is disappointed by the results because he never got his rematch with Rig, whom he views as a truly worthy opponent. Presumably, this is supposed to mirror how disinterested Jan Lee is in Lei Fang, causing her frustrations to fester. He now has a rival that doesn't acknowledge him as such. This brings us to DOA. 6, where she faces him outside of the tournament and actually manages to win, but she's disappointed, noting that his skills have dulled because he's still so focused on Rig. This parallels Jan Lee's feelings after having beaten Rig earlier, since Rig apparently doesn't remember Jan Lee at all. When the two fight in the tournament, Jan Lee's got his groove back and beats Lei Fang again, but she's happy with the result because he's back to his old self. The writers like to imply she's developed a crush on him since the rivalry started. He then goes on to beat Diego in the finals, finding a rival much more interested in him than Rig ever was. I'm sure the problem is quite apparent. Lei Fang has the exact same goal six games in a row, and when she finally achieves her goal, she isn't satisfied with the result. But this isn't some new development where she finds that achieving her goal has left her feeling empty and setting off some self-reflection. No, her lack of satisfaction isn't part of her story, it's part of Jan Lee's. This is the plot point where the hero loses to someone he could beat any other day because he's lost his groove, setting up his return to his standard, whereupon he beats this other person as a sign that he's ready for his real trial. And with the real fight ending the same way it always does, this sets the stage for her to still be out to beat him in DOA 7, but maybe on slightly friendlier terms which is not at all earned because that development revolves around Jan Lee and Rig, not Jan Lee and Lei Fang. And it's kind of weird that Hitomi fought Jan Lee in three consecutive games and is best friends with Lei Fang, but she isn't part of the rivalry plot at all. There have been a number of things that have changed with both characters over the six games, but the core rivalry has not been influenced by it at all. So let's try and imagine a more eventful rivalry with shifts in their dynamic and goals. We'll diverge in DOA 4. Three games is the maximum length I'd normally accept something like this going unchanged, but 4 added some useful new dynamics for developing the rivalry, plus DOA 5 was made after the merger and with a different director, so it's fitting for the shift to happen as part of the new era of the franchise. 
Lei Fang learns of Jan Li having found someone he actually acknowledges as a rival and is incensed by this. She views this as him seeing himself as better than her and arrogantly focusing on the winner of DOA 2 as someone he believes is more on his level, making her far more determined to best him. He told me either tries to temper her rage or encourage a healthy competition with her to help her improve for the next tournament. In this version, she is not explicitly the lowest ranking of the four fighters and actually manages to best Jan Li rather than having him win the tournament. Maybe we say he won DOA 4. With that closure, she could finally move on with her life. The audience and announcer also make a big deal of this, as a lot of people have been rooting for this cute kung fu girl to finally beat the man who has long since been recognised by the public as her rival. Said man, meanwhile, can't believe he actually lost to this girl he's beaten so many times before. And with his recent loss to Rig still fresh in his mind, he begins to wonder if he's completely lost his way. He trains tirelessly until DOA 6 where he challenges Lei Fang to a rematch. But she's moved on from that rivalry and is much more interested in her friendly rivalry with Hitomi. Hitomi steps in to challenge him to keep things civil and since he's fought her two times previous, he sees her as a decent barometer for his skill. Once he beats her, he challenges Lei Fang again and she just tells him she'll fight him at the tournament if they get paired up. We can have another scene later where she watches him train and notes how he's different from previous times she's watched him train. Then comes the tournament. The two face off once again and Lei Fang wins again, but she takes no pride in this victory, it being clear to her that her old rival has clearly lost his groove. She's easily able to identify the problem and offers to train with him to prepare him for his next rematch with Rick, which he will later win in DOA 7. Alternatively, the two don't actually face off in the tournament, as one of them is eliminated before they reach the other. Instead, Jan Lee fights Diego, who looks up to him as a top tier fighter and finds a new rival in him. Lei Fang still offers to fight Jan Lee after the tournament, but he turns her down, opting to get back to his old level first. Lei Fang is satisfied with this outcome, musing that it's almost nostalgic for him to turn down a fight with her. This leads into DOA 7, where the two are on generally friendlier terms, closer to her and Hitomi's dynamic with Elliot, and when Jan Lee challenges her again, confident in his skills once more, Lei Fang gladly accepts. Something like that would be preferable to reaching a point where Lei Fang's bios are totally interchangeable and can largely fit with any game in the series. Speaking of her bios, her DOA 4 bio reveals she was saved by Jan Lee 6 years before DOA 1, meaning she was 13 and he was 14. Jan Lee was, unironically, more accomplished at 14 than Ayane was and she's a ninja with superpowers. DOA is fucking wild, man. You don't know anything about power. If you liked this video, why not subscribe and support me on Patreon like these fine people here? If not, then make sure to share it with your enemies so they can suffer along with you. Today's recommended video is Respect Jan Lee, Dead or Alive's Bruce Lee tribute by The Fighter's Den. He's a gatekeeper.